At least five surprisingly small asteroids which could hit Earth should worry us more than previously thought. Here's what you need to know. Between 100,000 and a million small-scale asteroids have a possibility of hitting Earth over the next century, and five in particular have a collision risk of 1 in 1,000, according to Chinese astronomers cited by the South China Morning Post. Although these asteroids are under 100 meters wide, much smaller than the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs, they remain a serious threat as they carry more kinetic energy than atom bombs. In 2013, a 19-meter-wide asteroid exploded over the Russian city of Chelyabinsk in an explosion around 30 times as powerful as the nuclear blast over Hiroshima. The damage to around 7,500 buildings and 1,500 people that one caused has been used by astronomers writing in the Acta Astronomica Sinica journal as an example of why we should be wary of these smaller space rocks. Data in one existing database showed orbiting behaviors of more than 700 asteroids could propel them towards Earth in the next century, but physical models on asteroid formation calculated the number could range from 100,000 to a million. The small size and large number of these short-term hazardous asteroids make them extremely difficult to track, according to the astronomers. The research adds to more well-established threats like that of asteroid Bennu. Bennu is around 500 meters wide at its equator, according to NASA, which puts it inside the traditional definition of a potentially hazardous asteroid because it is more than 460 feet or 140 meters wide and could theoretically come within 4.65 million miles of Earth. NASA found that the single likeliest impact moment for Bennu would be on the afternoon of September 24, 2182. On that Tuesday, Bennu has about a 1 in 2,700 chance of hitting Earth. Any impact would pack the energy of more than 1.1 billion tons of TNT, roughly 2 million times the energy of last year's devastating port explosion in Beirut, Lebanon. The NASA team reached its revised estimate by pinpointing Bennu's distance from Earth to within about 7 feet at dozens of times between 2019 and 2020. That level of precision is like measuring the distance between the Empire State Building and the Eiffel Tower to within a few thousandths of an inch. However, there are various plans in the works to fight back against these potentially catastrophic space rocks. In July, a Chinese government-funded paper published in the Science Direct Journal suggested launching a fleet of rockets into space to divert Bennu's path. The idea behind that study is that China could launch 23 Long March 5 rockets, each weighing almost 900 tons on takeoff, to deflect the asteroid's path. The rockets would be made up of an assembled kinetic impactor retained within the launch vehicle upper stage that sends the spacecraft into an Earth-escaping trajectory to add extra weight and increase impact on the asteroid. Researchers found in simulations that these vehicles could deflect a large asteroid from its original path by a distance of 1.4 times the Earth's radius, according to a report in the South China Morning Post. That plan does not rely on nuclear technology, which is thought to be an advantage, as a nuclear blast could break any target into several threatening chunks. The Chinese study also says it has an advantage over a similar 2018 proposal worked on by NASA. It says NASA would use 75 Delta IV heavy rockets, each carrying one hammer impactor, to knock the asteroid off course, against just 23 vehicles needed here. Lower numbers are ideal because the more launches required for success, the more difficult the mission, due to the failure rate of each individual launch, according to one Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory scientist who was part of the NASA proposal. However, earlier this month, the New York Times reported that a separate group of U.S. scientists have found an even better way to deflect huge asteroids. Their findings show that the long-held belief that a huge asteroid heading to Earth should be shattered into pieces is not the right way to go. After testing an extreme velocity gun at NASA's Ames vertical gun range, the researchers now say the best defense is to orchestrate a much lighter impact coming from the side of the asteroid's trajectory. In this way, the asteroid is left intact and nudged slightly off its Earth-destroying course. The researchers say the original idea of shattering the asteroid would create too many pieces that would still be likely to hit Earth and cause serious damage. This kind of research is necessary because scientists keep testing what would happen if an asteroid was going to hit us and we keep failing the tests. Back in May, NASA reported a test scenario where a fictitious asteroid was detected six months before it would hit Earth. The participants in the simulation considered various missions in which spacecraft could try to destroy the asteroid or deflect it off its path. Most options to deflect an asteroid, such as deflection via a high-energy impact or a gravity tractor or an ion beam shepherd, worked by only slightly nudging the targeted space rock. 
They found that if performed far enough in advance, that small nudge builds up to become a large shift in position by the time the asteroid gets near Earth. But participants concluded that such missions wouldn't be able to get off the ground in the short amount of time before impact. They did find that using a rocket to deliver a nuclear explosion on or next to the asteroid could save the Earth in some circumstances. However, unfortunately, a nuclear bomb would only be able to make a difference if the asteroid was relatively small compared to the giants that hit Earth in the past. These findings come at the same time as we are increasingly clear on how devastating any impact on Earth could be as we hone in on exactly what happened to the dinosaurs. In July, the theory that the asteroid which made all non-avian dinosaurs extinct also sent a mile-high tsunami crashing into North America was further confirmed by the discovery of fossilized mega-ripples below the Earth's surface. Occurring 66 million years ago, the flow of huge waves may have continued for days as they reflected back on themselves multiple times within the Gulf of Mexico, according to a study published in the Earth and Planetary Science Letters Journal. According to Science Alert, the effects of the tsunami would have imposed devastation for thousands of miles, forcing sea life onto land and land life into the sea. However, atmospheric changes were primarily responsible for wiping out up to 75% of species on the planet at the time. The asteroid hit with a power of 10 billion atomic bombs. According to previous research by the Jackson School of Geosciences, and initially this turned the planet into a fiery hellscape. Then, when sulfur-bearing minerals from the impact site were released into the atmosphere, they began reflecting sunlight away from the planet, causing catastrophic global cooling. Obviously, if we're going to try to stop that happening again, the first thing we need to do is discover more about what we're up against, which is why Japan launched spacecraft Hayabusa 2 in late 2012. Hayabusa 2 was sent to investigate asteroid Ryugu by lobbing a copper shell into the space rock. Japan's space agency JAXA published the probe's findings in the journal Science on March 19. The Hayabusa is 0.6 meters across the front, 0.4 meters from prow to stern, and has four ion thrusters. The spacecraft is equipped with X and Ka band antennas for communication, and its sensors include optics, lidar, and spectrometers. According to JAXA, the small carry-on impactor shell blasted a semi-circular crater 14 meters wide and 0.6 meters deep, with the shock apparently absorbed by boulders. This confirms that Ryugu is indeed a rubble pile, or boulders loosely held together by sandy materials. The impact experiment suggests that the most ancient materials of the asteroid are up to 4.6 billion years old, but the substance coalesced with other asteroids' remains only 10 million years ago to form Ryugu. The rovers have now sent back high-resolution photos of Ryugu's surface. Japan's rovers that successfully landed on an asteroid have sent back their first images. Japan's space agency made history last week as it was the first to ever land robot rovers on an asteroid. The rovers have now sent back high-resolution photos of Ryugu's surface. Due to Ryugu's weak gravity, Rover 1A and Rover 1B move around by hopping. Each rover stays in the air for 15 minutes and moves horizontally up to 15 meters with each hop. Rover 1A and Rover 1B are each equipped with multiple cameras, which are now taking stereo images of Ryugu. They have also sent back video of the asteroid's rocky surface. For the next part of the mission, the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft, which deployed the rovers, plans to land on Ryugu by bombing the surface with a missile to create a landing zone for the ship. It will then collect asteroid samples. Scientists involved believe the samples will give us a glimpse into the beginning of the universe. The spacecraft is set to return to Earth by the end of 2020. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.